International Women's Day continues to be a powerful platform globally that unifies tenacity and drives action for gender parity while celebrating the social, cultural, and economic achievements of women. This year, the Parliament Channel highlights women in Trinidad and Tobago from all walks of life, including non-traditional sectors. We take a look at their journey, the challenges that were overcome, successes celebrated, and milestones achieved. Hi, I'm Dr. Regini Haraksing. I'm a human geneticist and lecturer in biotechnology here at UE. This actually started a long time ago for me. Uh, in, in school, I was always very interested in studying phenomena at the most fundamental level. I liked maths and science. Um, I liked other things too. And for a long time, I flip-flopped between what I wanted to do. Both of my parents are academics. Um, my dad is a historian and my mom is a physicist. Um, and I always knew I wanted to be an academic, but the field flip-flopped. So there was a time I thought I wanted to be a physicist because I wanted to study the universe at its most fundamental level. Um, there was a time I thought I wanted to be a philosopher. Um, in the end, I decided the thing that I was really interested in studying was life. And in order to study life at its most fundamental level, I think that's genetics and biochemistry. So that's how I decided to do that. My parents are probably my biggest influence. Education was always very important, but I was also encouraged to pursue all, lots of other extracurricular activities. Um, I feel like I kind of grew up at UWE because I was here you know, on afternoons after school and just sort of being in, in an academic community made me appreciate the intellectual freedom that comes with academia. Um, also, the idea that you're not going to work for a specific period of time. You're sort of working all the time or interested in thinking of all the time. And um, it's really, I would say, more of a lifestyle than a job. I think my greatest success is probably yet to come, I hope. Um, but I, I would say um, finding myself in positions where I've had the opportunity to work at the cutting edge with some of the, you know, the leaders in my field. Science these days is less about one person sitting down um, or working alone in their own lab. Most um, Big discoveries these days come from large consortia of scientists who um, collaborate and, and, and a community of people who are all working towards certain big goals. So um, and any individual scientist is not really themselves making huge leaps, but really it's a whole field of people who are moving together in one direction. I was lucky enough to be part of some major projects. Um, one was the 1000 Genomes Project, which is, uh, was an international consortium of hundreds of scientists who were working to map the genetic variation in thousands of people around the globe to understand how human genomes differ from each other from people from different parts of the world. In the Caribbean and Latin America, actually some of the most recent uh, numbers from the UN suggest that the Caribbean and Latin America have some of the highest um, rates of women in science um, in the world. And we see that here at UE as well. In UE, we actually have a two to one ratio of females to male students overall. And in the faculties of science and technology, we seem to have even numbers of males and females roughly. Particularly in the life sciences, we tend to have a lot of females and sometimes be female dominated. And in fact, in our biotechnology programs, we have largely a majority female um, population. However, in you know, older generations, we do see that it is um, still male dominated, but we're seeing that change. And for example, um, I was hired here three years ago along with five other, well, as a group of five people, and we were all five women, all hired into the Department of Life Sciences. And the interesting thing about that was that nobody seemed to notice that we were five women. It was just, 
you know, we're hiring these five people because we think they're the best for these jobs. And so I think that's really where we want to be, where we're not thinking so hard about we need to fill this quota of women. Uh, so in the Caribbean, I would say, um, at least in my generation, and I know this is not true of my mother's generation, women in science is not really a huge problem. I think we have quite a lot of girls who are interested in women who are coming into science. I think the problem is getting these people to stay and to go to the highest levels of achievement in, the, in their fields. Um, there's lots, lots of issues as to why people leave. Um, you know, it, it can be just that careers are, certain types of careers are more um, difficult to manage with family life. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why. I don't intend to leave. Um, but I do know um, we're seeing more and more girls coming into science, and I think that's a good thing. I went to SAGS, and at SAGS I was obviously among um, a community of women and alumni who have been high achieving people for, uh, for decades. And I never once felt that as a woman, I should not be able to achieve anything. Um, I don't know if that's true for girls across the country. Um, in terms of the students that I see who come through UE, I believe the ones that I, I teach also generally feel like they can accomplish anything they want to. Um, I try to instill a sense of empowerment to these girls when we when I, when in my teaching and in my research um, and to kind of lead by example. But I, I can't really speak in general. But as far as I've seen, lots of women and girls are coming into science and enjoying themselves and wanting to, you know, and having the ambition to become scientists. And I think um, that's as much as we can hope for as teachers. Women have been prominent in the field of genetics for a long time, starting with um, discovering the structure of DNA. So this was discovered by three people, and one of whom was a woman. Um, another important scientist who is living today um, is also a woman, Mary Claire King. She's the discoverer of the BRCA gene, which is um, a gene that's responsible for a number of breast cancers when it's mutated. Uh, and the discoverers of genome editing, um, of a particular genome editing technology, which just happened a few years ago, are both women. So women have been quite prominent in the field of genetics and genomics. And for me, working in this field, I've never felt any kind of um, discrimination or any kind of feeling like I was alone in this as a woman. I would give the same advice to boys and girls in that you can do anything you want to do, but you have to make sure that you are putting in the work and that you are putting in the work and the time. So you have to master all the fundamentals. There's no, and there's no um, replacement for hard work. No matter how brilliant you are, you have to do the work. Women have come a long way, yet there's still more to be achieved. For more information on International Women's Day 2019, visit our website at ttparliament.org and our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram.